And we're live. Seems like we're getting audio. It seems like everything's well. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. It is David here for our uh, the next greatest podcast. Today is going to be a bit of a rant, so prepare for it. It's going to come with a few stories, and then we're going to go to all bent out of shape rant. We're going to talk about how casinos fail or screw over players. And quite honestly, I'm a little nervous for this one only because uh, for a very long time we have been uh, playing ball. And uh, we realized, like, I think most of our audience and most of our customers, most people that visit Casino Quest, really could care less if we play ball. They're here for the strategies. They're here for the good humor. They're here for bath time with Alex, apparently, the number seven <laughs> Twitch streamer yesterday for his uh, hot tub stream. So that's good. He's working on preserving that bath water for you guys, so stay tuned. But today we're going to talk about how the casinos take advantage of us or how what's the takeaway, why we exist. And uh, we're going to start with sort of the evolution of this process. So I'll, I'll first say hello. Do we have anybody saying hello? Should I say hello? I don't, I don't watch the chat or the moderation. I, I rely on Dennis to feed me what well, I need to be fed. I'm just making sure everything's running smoothly. I'll, I'll, I'll let you Good. know if anyone says anything. Okay, so uh, we're going to start this off. It's very easy. Uh, those of you that know, I have been a dealer in this town for something like 32 years. I've been involved. Oh, let's just say I've been involved in the gaming business for 32 years. I connected with Alex about six years ago at his school, uh, maybe seven years now, six years ago at the school. Wonderful experience. And so ultimately, me and Alex sort of got together and we started. Uh, we evolved CEG Dealer School. We evolved, or we started Casino Quest together. And here we are today. I had a customer come in. Actually, quite a few of you over the years, honestly, have come in. And and one of the one of the big the mainstay questions are, um, why don't more casinos work with us? Like, why aren't casinos reaching out? Especially given that last month, for example, we got 15 million unique views amongst all of our channels. I mean, we have you know quite the fan base now. We've evolved with the largest school by by registrations. Where there's a lot of things that have worked their way out, and um, we're, we're going to go into that. Uh, we're we're going to start this off with, we're going to answer, we're going to answer, why don't the casinos work with us? Why don't we have any table game tech at the school? Where are all these sponsorships? You know, we have some fantastic sponsorships uh, that work with our channel uh, that are kind of outside the space looking for branding. Uh, we have a very interesting, you know, male-dominated demographic, and so... You know, we feed into that, which is fantastic. But ultimately, most of what we do is geared towards the end user. I mean, we are end user kind of uh, dealers. Uh, our game space is all about what are the best games, the best strategies. And so, you know, we're happy to educate uh, our players. And, uh, you know, the question is always, uh, you know, does educating the players piss off the casinos? Well, I don't, we don't think so. We don't, we don't think that, first of all, there's not enough of you. There's too many people that stay uneducated, end up at the casinos, and really don't, don't learn anything about uh, the gameplay. I mean, many of you have been to casinos, and you see people crowding around triple zero. Well, there you go. That one got gotcha. you. So, uh, but we're going to go down the list. And I think a lot of you guys, especially those of you who have been around gaming for a while, you're going to relate. We're going to commiserate together. I'm going to share a few stories, uh, and then I'm going to go full rant towards the end. And we're going to give away uh, either this hat or a genius hat at some point. So if we get enough likes, we're going to go do that. Uh, but welcome again. If you, if you haven't been to our channel before, if you're new to our channel, uh, don't, don't, uh, don't be afraid to subscribe. Um, you can also visit our website uh, and shop Casino Quest. We got some cool stuff, but uh, let's go. You ready? I'm ready. So really quickly, we have a five dollar super chat from LV Djen. LV Djen, thank you. Uh, Daddy David needs to wear the assless chaps. Lol. Oh God, <laughs> that's his assless chaps. I think he took them back, dude. I think they're on their way back to where they belong. No, no, I don't. That's not his. Anyways, let's get started Different with person. the, uh, the okay. topic. So we're going to go down this list, and I think we've compiled a pretty good list between me and Alex. Alex was working with me, with me earlier. Um, he's working on bottling up that uh, hot tub uh, that he did yesterday, so there you go. All right, so one, one of the biggest things we, we've, uh, we've come across, which actually has made me, uh, I say, put, put me a bit out of sorts, is so how do we, we wonder how do those triple zero games get the play that they do and it's become a distraction. So everything in the casino is meant to distract you from the truth or the reality. No one wants to tell you 
what the odds pay, how the odds take away. For example, on dice games, there's downtown odds and strip odds. They use the word four and two interchangeably so that you don't know you're being, let's just say, screwed a little bit. When you go, when you end up at a casino and you see a roulette table, and instead of a triple zero, so you see the triple zero, but it's got a graphic, it's got a logo, they do whatever they can to conceal the fact that this game is terrible for you. Even when it comes to slot machines, getting to the pay table, understanding what things pay, how to scroll through and figure out. Most of us, when we sit down at a slot machine, uh, we really don't know. We can imagine that if the cherries line up or you know things line up in a line and then they come up with lines that we don't understand or we don't know what's going on. And then if we look through and look at the pay tables, Oh, who knows, man? I mean, we, we've actually been at a new machine. We've watched a new machine. We've gone to the pay table and tried to look up something that we got paid for. And there was absolutely no way to, for us to discern in, in a literal sense. I'm sure that, that a pro could have stepped up to the game and helped us figure out the, you know, the times table, the multiple, or what line it got paid on and how it got paid on. But, but none of us are going through that. So ultimately, it comes down to distractions. How can we distract the player from the truth? How can we take away, how can we make your experience such a distraction that you don't care what you're getting paid? You're just happy to sit down and enjoy yourself. One of the big innovations we saw at G2E this year was two, uh, two spots for your drinks. So if you walk up to the table, that is, that's, that's big. How can we get you more drinks? How can we get you more alcohol? So when you play this game, you don't realize you're getting screwed over. You know what I mean? Uh, all right. What's all that? Super chat, but keep, keep, keep going. Keep going. We'll, we'll, we'll stop at a, like a good stopping point. All right. So the, the, the other part of it is, is the LEDs, the lights, the graphics, all of these that are meant to be immersive so that we can't figure out we're there for more the fun factor than the win factor. The opportunity is lost, and now really we're just enjoying a show. We, we saw another machine, and really that's what it was. It lit up, it interrupted, the, the gameplay got interrupted several times, and we got to see a very cool uh, pseudo sitcom play out on the machine while we were losing our money, and ultimately we didn't realize we were losing our money. It wasn't a big deal. All right, you ready? I don't know why I keep, I keep going back to this. this All right. Uh, the other thing, the, the other part of this is the evolution of, uh, of, of gotcha. So every time they figure out a way to take advantage of a player, they keep moving that needle. So here, you know, we have double zeros, you know, here in town. And then, of course, triple zero became a thing. And now we can got you with that. Or we have side bets within a crap table. There's, there's lots of these side bets. I know a lot of you really love ATS because you like to shoot uh, for the points. You like to see, you know, like to see the points recorded. Um, you like to take advantage of what you think you're taking advantage of the game. But ultimately, those games are, are losses for the players. They make a shit ton of money for the casino. And no casino is going to crowd and talk about how they, um, how they have profited from these bets. And ultimately, that's the gotcha. More side bets. I've seen tables now, blackjack tables. So, so at the school, we don't even teach all of these side bets. There's, there's one, two, three, four, four side bets. There's so many more ways to lose your money than playing the core game of blackjack. And again, those ultimately just keep on getting blackjack. Let's light it up more. Let's make it more uh, interactive or, or, or more fun in some way that takes away from your gameplay ultimately. All right, hold on a second. I need a drink. Well, why is drinking? I do have a couple super chats. Uh, we have no. Black Sheep gave us $2. Thank you, sir. Hi to all... We'll be uh, seeing you soon. Coin Pusher, or Alan Toy, is, Hi, Alan. says, when is the Hot Top Podcast? Uh, the Hot oh Top Podcast. Oh, my God. I knew we were going to go. 23 days. Uh, uh, we just had the Hot Top uh, stream. He did it yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, K Panther mm -hmm. gave us $2. Says, would you rather asses chaps or crapless craps? Oh, my God. You guys are so stuck. This is the community we have. Um, assless chaps or which one? Crapless craps? Uh, mm, I, I like crapless craps. Uh, I enjoy it. Obviously, the take is a bit higher. I mean, I, I'm more of a classic craps kind of guy. There's nothing classic. I guess, I guess assless chaps are classic. By the way, I learned a lot about uh, assless chaps. You just look those up. They're, they're actually, that's how they come. That's hey, the way anyways, they come. Anyways, no tangents Go. today. LVD okay. Gen 5 no says, mm -hmm. I talk a lot of smack. But I'm looking forward to seeing you guys a uh, week after next. Yeah, fantastic. Have a date with uh, Dice with David. Oh, fantastic. We're looking forward. Go right yeah. ahead. Get Go right back to the top. All right. We're going to go back to the rant. Okay. Um, 
if I seem a little distracted, it's because uh, for a very long time we've been in this game. Uh, we've been trying to make this game better for everyone. And we've, we've played the line, we've walked the line, we've done everything we could to be, be a fair player. And I think that ultimately it's got to come down to our, you know, you guys. I mean, we're, we're here to represent you. We're, we're going to be the anti-hero in this, in this game, and that's all there is to it. This year at D2E was quite literally a very good example of, of why that is. And uh, I'm going I'm to get to that towards the end. I, 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 if I'm, I'm, I don't want to come across as, as being petty. I don't want to come across as, as not being, um, not supporting, you know, the gaming business as a whole. I, I, I do think that there's room for it to rain back, and I feel like we've we've gone too far, you know, over. I mean, we're we're approaching a recession. The last time the recession happened, casinos were were, you know, jumping over each other trying to regain some of these customers, trying to you know issue you know get coupons and and find ways to sort of discount the experience. And I and I'm looking forward to that. I, I'm looking forward to return of five dollar games. I'm looking return to you know play coupons that people can actually use. I'm looking I'm um, I'm looking for a return to you know rooms that that have a resort fee waived. You know these kinds of experiences. You know where where it's value over upgrades. And and right now that's not the experience that we have. Uh, too many too many properties, too many places, too many bosses, too many people are looking to take advantage and monetize every part of the experience. And ultimately, that's a big takeaway. And I feel like if, if we have a voice, if, if we have a way to talk and educate our, our consumer base and our users, that's, that's the way forward for us. And we're going to get some flack for it. And, you know, no one cares anymore. You know, we just quite literally don't care. All right. Um, we talked about, um, you know, the monetization of everything. That's the truth. You walk through a casino, there's nothing free. We had a customer here the other day, and we were, we were both commiserating about how the shows used to be cheap, right? The food used to be cheap, how there were so many things that provided you real value and gave you incentive to interact with the casino, even play a game. You wanted to learn how to play craps, a lot of places offered you a coupon to start on the line so you understood how the money went and how it got off. None of that exists. Everything, everything throughout the entire space is monetized. Every square foot it is monetized. You know, we try to max out every square foot in the casino is maxed out to to equal some kind of profit. If if there's some area, they're now they're now there's one caveat to that now where they're trying to pull out slot machines. They found that having less slot machines, giving people more space to play, lets them stay longer. Wow, that's a no-brainer. We, we we've all been talking about that I think for a long time. No one likes to be elbow to elbow and walking around this maze of slot machines. We we all love to like find a space, make it our own, and enjoy our time. And especially those of you who enjoy Kino. You know what I mean? I don't want to sit next to someone, you know, banging away and having their own. Let them have their own experience a little further away. And guess what? Maybe I'll stay in my. Maybe I'll put my ass in the seat a little bit longer. Okay. Um, the next part about this is the upgrades. Um, every upgrade that that's available now is, isn't about you know you being a good player, you being a good person. Every upgrade has a price, and and the price has to be paid in order to you know to reach that upgrade. It used to be that if if you were that special player, if you were able to walk into a casino with it with with not all the money, but just enough money that that you know five thousand dollar player, three thousand dollar player. You might find yourself with a free room, maybe a free ride, maybe a free dinner, maybe all sorts of things, some kind of a line pass, anything that would give you some incentive to be part of that experience, you know, that night, the next day, whatever the case is. None of none of that is true. So we, we were talking about opening or having transportation available to to our audience. So we were me and me and Alex are, are actually thinking about buying a vehicle that we could have a white glove service. And by that, I mean. You show up in Vegas and you have a hotel book. We'll pick you up at the airport. We'll carry your bags. We're not just going to have a driver. We're going to have an actual valet person attached to the vehicle to help you transition. You're here on vacation. You don't want to wait in line to check in. You want to be able to get off the plane, get into your room, and then and then play and, and, and have fun and, and start your experience. But for many of us, we get off the hotel. We get out of the... We get out of the airport. Now we got to wait for a car. We got to wait for a shuttle. We got to Uber over. When we get to the hotel, now we have two hours to check in. Then we got to find our room. We got to get situated. Then we leave. 
how about we, we, we make this a, a wonderful experience? I mean, you're on vacation after all. How about we, we optimize your time here so you can get to the tables fast, so you get the slot machine fast. No. So all this, this whole transition, this whole thing that's been removed. Do you know MGM used to have a reservation desk at the airport so that you can get ahead of your check-in? You would check in literally at the airport. So by the time you got to the hotel, you were good to go. You know, the one casino that still has that feature, sort of, is the Aria the Sky Suites. They'll check in, pick you up. They essentially have like a white glove service so that you can you can get to gambling. You know, you're there for a reason, right? You can get to gambling or eating some expensive ass food or going to some expensive ass show, whatever the case is. But so we wanted uh, we want to have this experience and we want to do it at a fairly affordable rate. We're we're confident that people will pay uh, something, and then um, we'll be able to take you to your hotel. You'll be able to have this experience, have this sort of valet white glove experience, regardless of what you play. Maybe you only come to Vegas and you only pay 500 bucks. Who cares? You know, you pay for your spot. We give you like this hour window and help you transition from the plane to your room. Voila. And I, I guarantee you just that you would think that and, and a loss leader, like a loss leader. How many people would sign up for that kind of thing? Even if you don't have to be a high level, why do you have to be a high level? But maybe you say plus $50 plus $100, whatever the case is, it'd be worth it just to not wait in line for some people, you know, for however many, however long with their bags uncomfortably waiting to get to their room while they're still hungry or they're looking for a coffee or the bathroom, whatever the case is. Uh, anyways. Okay, what do you got? I got two Super Jets. Go. Uh, we have Matt K. Gave us $5. Didn't hey, Matt, say anything. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have Carol Tucker. Gave us $5. Says, Hi, you- Carol. David, do you think any roulette wheels are rigged? Thanks. No, 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 no. There's not a casino in the world that would risk. Not a live casino in the world that will. I okay. Not a caveat. casino that has a gaming license. Very yeah, casinos that have gaming license, it's not worth it. I mean, the game is already rigged. I mean, you know, they they don't need to rig anything. They don't need to play with the, the adding triple zero is is absurd. I mean, the number of people that stand that literally belly up to a triple zero. That come uneducated. They don't. They don't need to rig that wheel. The, the rig. The wheel is already rigged. It's amazing, um, and and this is what Vegas is, is slowly becoming. Is this big tourist trap? You know, instead of a, a mecca for gambling, uh, a mecca for gaming that it used to be. And I understand the 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 draw of entertainment venues. I understand the draw of the foodie thing is fantastic. I love the fact that there's there's all this wonderful food. I understand that inflation is playing a role and supply logistics are playing a role. But when you go to a Mexican restaurant, okay, just, you know, a foofy ass Mexican restaurant at a casino here in town, and for the first time you're charged a premium price for the nachos that every other Mexican restaurant, and by the way, if you want the sauce, you gotta pay extra for the damn sauce. What is it? Not the sauce, the, um, whatever. I mean, it, it just makes no sense. There's actually restaurants now charging for the bread. And if you look carefully, there's a few restaurants that charge you some type of convenience fee or table fee or something. And this is the gotcha stuff. As soon as they can put this on there and most of us don't look or don't bother to pay attention, then guess what? They're going to add more gotcha. They're just going to keep gotcha, gotcha, gotcha until everything is, is absurd. You can't come here with less than, I, I don't know, a couple thousand bucks and eat here for a week and stay. It, it, it's, 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 it's amazing how far the needle has moved. Okay. Oh, uh, while, Ready? while you're transitioning, I guess yep. Matt K didn't his uh his thing didn't show up. So he said, my question is, mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on how the casino has brought the electric roll to win uh craps games versus a regular craps game? Um, I mean the verdict is still out on the roll to win tables. I I personally not the biggest fan because I can't play in, as interactively as I want to play with those bets. I really need you know what I like I like the inner block, the ones where you play by yourself. And so you can take however much time you need to arrange your bets and play interactively. The problem with the, the roll to win is kind of you're on a counter, right? There's someone's going to roll the dice. They're not going to let them sit forever. And I know, I know that some of the software is being updated that, that hasn't, that rollout has been a little befuddled uh, for some casino owners. Uh, uh, so, you know, they're working on that obviously, but, I really prefer a, a real table. I like the inner block to play by my, you know, if I'm going to play by myself and I'm working on a system. So I like Crapsy, right? We got Crapsy.com. I love a real table so I can have, if I have a good dealer, if I have a good dealer, a friendly dealer, a friendly crew who's willing to work with me, I love that the most because now I can have a social experience because I tend not to be the most social outside of that. So it's a good way for me to get out and be social. 
but yeah, so the 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 roll to win table, uh, not so good. You know, you know, it's funny is we we ran into that crew uh, some time ago, and of course uh, they weren't very friendly to us. Uh, so we, um, but we were still engaged. Uh, we were still interactive. I made a comment about not being able to get my bets in, and of course they. The, the presenter of that table who happened to be one of their executives got took it took it personally well, one more question Go. another super chat five dollars from diana says mm -hmm. thank you for all your videos when i come to town would you recommend i come to casino quest first mid visit or both first for or which one or which one to come to casino quest should they come to casino quest at first first before they go to gamble or should yeah. they come mid visit mid visit i always recommend you coming here if there's any part of your experience that you want to upgrade i mean I have, I have, I've had so many wonderful, especially if you play dice. I mean, even roulette, Alex can sort of fine tune. And so when you get to the casino, you know how much you're going to play, you know what strategy you're going to invest in. I mean, it's actually, think about this. It's, it's really cool to make a reservation for 20 bucks. And that way you have a plan before you go to, if you're an actual gambler, I, I've had quite a few people who do dice with David. Now I've, I know that we have some fans. Some people do the dice with David post facto or really anytime. I've had a few people come just to do Kino. So it's not really about dice. But if you're trying to do dice and you're trying to learn the units and the bankroll and you're, you're trying to get a handle on how you want to play and what, what the plan is. Or even you, just strategy. You might not yeah, even just have a strategy. strategy. Yeah. yeah, if you don't have a strategy, you can come here and you come. We give you a plan. I mean, you leave here at least with, with, a, with a higher level of confidence. Maybe not all the confidence and maybe you still have things, you know, but we can really drill it down. And you don't honestly you don't have to book with me. You want to book with me, that's fantastic. But we have we really have some fantastic dealers. We're, we're all we're all mostly on the same page. And and remember, I, I love all the channels out there. I love all the people that that, you know, all the players that present bets. You know, I I I've, I've been a dealer, so you get it from that side of the game. So, you know, the side of the game where I've been a dealer, a, a craps instructor. Same thing with Alex. Alex is roulette baccarat instructor and he's been a dealer for very long. And we we've seen what works and we we we, we know how the money has moved on the table. And uh, speaking of that, real quickly, no, not really a tangent. It's not about the math, uh, but but we help you. But we want you to max the math out as much as possible. But you know, create opportunity. If, if you're coming to Vegas for the math, you're going to be very disappointed because there's no math here that builds a four billion dollar property, right? You, you can't get to this beautiful Aria property or this Bellagio property with math that works in the uh, consumer's favor. However. We can teach you how to max out the short game, how to create opportunity for yourself, and that's really our goal. We also want to share with you, as we have this, we want to share the truth, man. We really want to share the ins and outs of these properties, what, what makes them work, what we like about them, what we don't. And, you know, to be honest with you, up until now, we haven't shared the whole truth. As much as, like, you'd be surprised how unfiltered I can be from my, from my staff's point of view, from people that work here. I'm a very unfiltered person. I don't like I don't like talking, and that's why I started out this this podcast a little nervous to be honest with you because it, it's uh, I wonder what the impact is. But let's be let's be real, we've been playing uh, we've been playing along now for years. The, the the impact, who cares? We're here for you, and that's the end of it. So we're gonna get to all right. What else? Last thing, Bill Phillips mm -hmm. uses member uh, chat says, yes. mad respects due due to everything y'all do. How common is search or dynamic pricing at resorts? Oh, dude. It's it's uh, because so think about the rooms, right? I mean, you you fill up a room, so you you know what's interesting and how prevalent that is here in Vegas, and this is something I'm actually fairly knowledgeable about. Um, you know, these rack rates go up. The rack rates will go up and will be will be flexible. So a convention will come in and it'll occupy just one hotel and have this whole. It'll just have this cascading effect on all the other rooms, regardless, right? And and really, it is is how much money can we get from our consumer? That's it. That, that that's the whole goal not not it many many years ago when you know back in the 90s when i started in this business you know early 2000s you know that that was a thing to a degree but ultimately there was a threshold where especially if you were a gambler you would you would come to town there'd be conventions but if you were a gambler you had there was that casino block that was available to you no one cares about casino block it's all about maxing out the price even people that gamble I, we had a, we had a guy here the other day. So one of the guys that initiated some of these conversations and got me thinking about our relationship with the casino is 
he comes out and plays ten thousand dollars and we have a lot of customers he has a player's card so some days he gets comp but ultimately he's got to fall in line behind everybody else there's there's no incentivizing his meals because the meals are three four hundred dollars why there's no there's no incentivizing any part of this relationship it's literally like we'll give you more points you can get to the free room faster you get to the free dinner as you go up in levels and there's and, and no takeaway thank god they have these player clubs but much of the real benefits are, are gone you know everything's been monetized literally everything is monetized everything's an upgrade it's not a value there's no value offerings there's no loss leaders there's no there's nothing about vegas uh, and when i say nothing probably a little generalization there might be uh, a casino out there you know you know recently station casinos who have a wonderful partnership with and by the way if you ever want to get some value get off the strip go to the station casino go to one of the station or boyd properties right but um, they closed the what used to be the Wild Wild West Casino that was attached to a Days Inn, and and I was bemoaning the fact that it was the last casino in town that I knew of that used to give you a coupon book. And of course, they have a Denny's. I love Denny's, but they closed that whole property, and that was the last one. They used to literally have you. I mean, does anybody remember the coupon books? You would check in, they give you a coupon book, and boom. Now it's not a coupon book. You know what? It's a marketing book it's 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 promos and and you know how to get into this club that's going to charge you 13 dollars a drink free entrance uh but the drinks are you know, at 13 by the way that's that's silly that's silly 16 18 24 dollars a drink okay can we move on are we ready i'm gonna get to the next one go to the next one all right um we meant to have this as a bulleted thing but we thought i should just free flow this i was just gonna go rant because i'm gonna get to the end and we're gonna kind of go a little bit unfiltered but wait for it okay so um, now we have we have everything has a value. Let's see how many Michelin star places we can squeeze into quite literally everything. So everything now is premium. Even the cafes, everywhere you go throughout Vegas, it's all that tourist thing. Used to be, especially when I worked downtown, and downtown still has an element of this. You had some budget options, and then you had all the foofy stuff that you know if if you manage to get there. And and I used to be very very I would say envious. I, I was I was always looking forward to you know going to this i never made a lot of money when i started in this business i, I worked a lot of low-end jobs uh, i never had juice uh, and there was a reason for that there was a reason for me uh you know people just didn't 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 respond i was a good dealer i practiced a lot and i became a good dealer because i worked a lot of low-end jobs i pushed a lot of checks so if you ever see if you see me on the videos moving chips around the table that's because I pushed a lot of chips around the table i worked a lot of bird games 25 cent tables dollar games this kind of thing for a very long time because uh, I had a, a lot of difficulty getting into uh, bigger casinos. And a lot of it was because uh, I didn't have juice. But anyway, so uh, going back to the value, the, the budget thing. So the, the, you used to be able to walk in everywhere. And there was always that, that thing for the gambler, that those sort of cheaper options and, and you know, uh, next to more expensive options, obviously. Um, and, and all that is going bye-bye. Every, everything is so ridiculously expensive i can't we're coming back to you know the inflation uh inflation has had a role uh, obviously a burger king in a casino is going to be more than a burger king not in a casino that's a thing but, oh my god all right you ready ready all right i'm going down all right um here's another thing if you haven't known already if you come to vegas don't come with change if you've collected change for a long time they're going to charge you to convert the change or They'll ask you to go to the bank. And the bank, by the way, will then charge you. There's no more of these change machines. It used to be you used to save up for, you know, maybe a couple weeks, maybe the whole year. You go to the casino with your big bag of change, give it to the cashier. She'd put it through the uh, change thing, and boom, you'd have a, you know, $50 buy in, $100 buy in. I've actually seen people buy in for hundreds of dollars, bringing their change with them. And every, once a year, they come to the casino, they convert all the change, and then bam, on the tables, right? Well, that's no longer a thing. And, and if you have this spare change left over from your slot machine, uh, you can elect for a free spin or elect to, I don't know, eat it? I'm not really sure what happens with this change. But, but in many cases, you can't even cash out. So if you cash out a, a ticket with 70 cents and you try to go cash it out at the damn machine, there's, no, there's nowhere for the change to come out. So there's they'll, some cases they'll offer you a spin. Uh, we've seen this, which isn't the worst thing. You got 30 cents left out of a $3 machine. And by the way, why doesn't the the whatever the machine is, how do how can we feel like if it's a three dollar spin, a fifteen cents win 
is somehow a win. It's it's not a win. And why are we being paid in odd units that don't add up so that we can get a final? It, that always amazed me. I would always look for machines. One of my favorite machines of all time was the double diamond. If, if uh, Going back a little way, it was a two coin machine. You either got paid one or two coins. So when you got down to the end, you didn't have some odd unit. You know, Megabucks was one of the first machines I remember that would, you know, you're sitting there playing $3 at a time, and then they're paying you back $1 or $2 or $7. So you didn't have a unit of three, and you had to keep feeding the machine to play off the You need to feel, even on Kino, strangely enough, that uh, somehow our money back is a win or, or less than our money back is a win. And then we get when we get to the end, and we have all we have is the few cents for coffee. By the way, few cents doesn't buy coffee. Um, it's not a win, and we have nowhere to cash it out. I don't even know what the solve is. I know that there's actually a lawsuit. There, there, are, there is somebody who got so pissed and is their own lawyer. They, they decided to file a class action lawsuit so only they could be paid for this ticket to try to resolve. Where did all this change go? Like, who is collecting all this errant change? Because most of us, if, if it becomes a thing where we got to stand in line to collect 35 cents, we're probably not standing in line. We're just throwing it out. And guess who wins? The casino wins again. Another 35 cents off the top. There you go. All right, ready? I keep asking if you're ready, like as if you're never, you're not going to be ready. At some point, you're going to be too busy back there. Uh, anyways, we go. have a super chat from Alan Toy. Five dollars oh, says, "Hi, Alan. If you have any change, give him the penny. Give the pennies to me or Daddy David." Yeah. Waiting for the dime crafts video. Want to play some penny slots that pay out of physical coins? I would love that. There, there is actually one casino in town left, that Skyline, where you can play physical coins. So if you do have change, just bring it down there. They're happy to help. And they have they have one of those things where you can pour it in there. Uh, it'll give you the money back like it used to be. Um, sadly, uh, there are no more penny. Ex I don't even think Skyline has a penny machine. Those are a lot of fun. One of the, one of the last casinos I knew that had the Penny Cleopatra, which was the Plaza. And it was amazing because I don't know how long those had been there for, but a long time, Alan. In fact, you know, I, I would get like 19, a whole bunch of wheat cents out of there uh, all the time. I would actually play, build up some credits, cash out the hopper, and go through the pennies, me and a friend of mine. No 1909s, by the way, but but I, I've had some, I did get a few rare ones out of there, but that's no longer a thing. There's no more nickel exports. There's none of that. Uh, everything is everything is taken out. In fact, one of the big things they had at G2E this year is is how uh, you can bring your your slot ticket over to you know the table game, which which some places already have that. But so if you cash out uh, on your on your slot machine, you can just come right over to Roulette, you know, put your ticket in, and and the dealer will see an amount, and then they'll give you that amount, you know. Uh, which is another thing, by the way, you know, we want all want uh, responsible gambling, but hey. While you're here, just uh, we accept debit cards right on the machine. That's a, that's that's pretty dangerous, man. I, I really really hate that there's an evolution where now you can just quite literally come up to them. You don't have to go to the ATM machine. They're happy to oblige you right on the table. And my guess is, I'm not. I don't know this for sure because I haven't done this yet. There's a fee associated with it, just like there would be with anything else. Like if you do your credit card, there's an ATM fee, whatever the case is for using your debit card. That is uh, ridiculously dangerous for a lot of people because if you can just come up and and now you got a debit card, at least with cash, you can leave the cards at home. You have no motivation to bring the card with you. You just take the cash. And by the way, I recommend for everyone out there, everyone who hears my voice. Gambling is a very competitive thing. Uh, it can get very dangerous for a lot of people. Even those of us that think that, you know, we're, we're not at the whim of our emotions. Uh, you know, sometimes our emotions get the best of us. I, I know what happened to me. I used to think I was a very in control person. And ultimately, uh, we can end up in a tight spot. And if you have your debit card there to kind of feed this machine, uh, I don't think that's a good thing. I really, really hate the debit card readers. I know that there's a lot of operators and bosses are like, this is the best thing since sliced bread. But but I really think in terms of responsible gambling, it's just not. And you should just come with the cash. Come with the cash you have to burn. There's no bills attached to it, nothing. This is my free money. This is my gambling money. It's my opportunity money. And I've saved it up and I'm coming to Vegas. And I'm going to go play to win. And then uh, once that's done, then I'm just going to go home, be happy. And I know that uh, I don't have to hate myself in the morning because I, I played exactly what I budget. I followed the plan, and the plan um, either worked, didn't work, whatever the case is. But it, it, it works if, if you leave and, and you're happy, right? If you leave and there's, there's nothing else, there's no chasing to be done, you can just leave and be happy with that. It's when we start to chase 
And then we start to hate ourselves, or we start to borrow money, or we start to drink, and then we start to get depressed about it, and then we're jumping off buildings, and things are going on that we don't like. Oh my God, sorry. <laughs> That's terrible. See, I'm a little unfiltered. I'm a little unfiltered today. All right. Um, could have been a low building. You never know. There's, uh, all right. You ready? Ready. I'm ready. Right. Uh, why do you why do you keep asking? Uh, like, I don't like, know. I'm I just gonna... I, I keep thinking. Um, I think I'm I think I'm just gonna get to the right. I think we all understand how Vegas has evolved. I think they've they've taken everything from us. They've just taken everything from us. There's there's nothing left. We 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 ultimately if if we ever get around a casino, you know, I've had people ask me, well, how's it gonna make money? How's it gonna profit? It, but casinos profited. How do you think casinos have existed now for I don't know decades and decades, maybe a hundred years? Casinos have always profited off these games, right? They don't have to profit on literally every. They don't have to build a margin. They don't have to bean count quite literally every part of the experience. They don't have to maximize. They don't have to max out every square foot of the casino floor. They don't have to find every single side bet to take advantage of you. They don't have to blow out every LED graphic and show to take away from you understanding, you know, what your win is. Do you know that there there is is a here in Vegas here I'm gonna give you a great example we went to a casino who might may or may not have been in Florida and I have a picture of this machine by the way so they can't say no one can say it's, it's not a thing if you play a five spot okay five spot keno ticket just bear with me I know there's a lot of keno haters but if, but this is a just an example right if you play a five spot here in Vegas you're gonna get between 750 and about 850 back for every one coin. So one coin, whatever the coin is, is gonna pay you back, let's say 750 on the worst side. 750, okay? Now, there's also a few places where they give you your money back if you don't win anything. So if you get zero numbers, you get your money back, you get your coin back, okay? So those places pay less on the high side, maybe as little as 500, even 400, okay? Now, normally, the more, the higher denomination you play of a slot machine, the more the better the payback. So, you know, if you're paying pennies, you're getting the worst payback. If you're paying dollars, you're getting, and by the way, if you wanna know why not, people ask me why play pennies over dollars. If you have the choice to play a $3 machine over a penny with $3 played, look at the paybacks. The paybacks on that dollar machine should be better. Not always, but should be better because it's a higher denomination, okay? I saw this machine, may or may not been in Florida, that had a payback of not 600, 500, 400, not an unholy 300, not a holy crap, we hate you 200, but on a $5 machine, 127, okay? Because guess why? Because they can, because they can get away with it, because people will stop there because they have no other place. They have a captive audience and they they keep moving the needle and be like, you know what? We were paying 400 last week. Let's pay 398, 350. Let's see if anybody's paying attention. And you know what? Very few people are. Let's, let's be realistic. How many of you have been on a crap table? I've been a dealer now for a long time. And it's amazing. It always stuns me how many people play systems that, that have no basis in reality, really. I mean, the, the game works one way, and, and we all know how it works, right? When everybody gets excited and there's people cheering at the game, that's because a hand was rolled, numbers were rolled, that's it. That's how you can make your money. Everything else is a grind, is a hedge, is, is a takeaway from the real opportunity that can play out in the game. You know what I mean? And and so, and so and this, uh, this is the distraction. The number of people that quite literally uh, don't take the time to get educated, to learn how to play or learn to pay back. It's silly. It's real money. It's real money. Why, do, why come here unless you quite literally are a Kino fanatic and you just want to play Kino and like me and you just want to grind time. But I grind time with a $20 bill or a $100 bill now. But it's like I could go eat. I could buy myself Lululemon uh, like Alex or do a hot tub stream or I could sit and play Kino. I don't expect to walk away with Kino winner. I, I I don't really care. Now, I want the best opportunity. I'm not just gonna. I don't want to just walk in and throw my money on the table and walk out. I mean, I, I want to play. I want to have the best opportunity to win. So so I pull up the pay table. I want to know. It doesn't have to be extraordinary. It just has to be reasonable. Not not an fu. Not a, not. I, you know I don't want to sit there uh, and and know I'm being screwed. That, that that's not that's not. But there's a lot of people come to Vegas they just don't care uh, it, it, it's quite stunning I, I used to know a guy that would bet $500 on the big six and eight pays even money 
And um, that's all he knew. $500 each on the big six and eight. And he, he would win and pick his money up or whatever. He thought he was a genius. $500. Meanwhile, if he placed him, even at 500 583 he would have won $83 more every hit. And it didn't matter what you said. Even if you were trying to help him, uh, it didn't matter. He just did, wasn't listening. He didn't want to hear it. He was happy with his $500. God bless him. And the casinos love you for it. If you don't know what you're doing, there, there's a business out here that wants to educate players on the table. Players don't want to, the casino doesn't want to educate players on the table. That, that's not a thing. When, when they teach you these games, they teach you in the most basic, rudimentary ways. If you ever see the lesson plaque where you can, you can come up and learn, because you know who used to teach these table games? Me. I was the voice. I was the guy. I was the you know the person that would you know pull people over and say, hey, how would you like to learn craps? And they teach you two come bets and a pass line bet. It's the same thing. And we can, I can explain to you all day why those bets suck. You know, from the perspective of the big hand, the one that wins, right? Uh, because we're not rolling for a seven. We're not rolling for a come. We're rolling for numbers. We want numbers. So if we want numbers, why wouldn't we bet place bets? Because <laughs> place bets pay better. You're not anchored to some silly contract bet or some silly. Uh, some silly comeback. It just it, it makes sense because it's true. You know that's the truth. Everything else is nonsense. Anyways, uh, I got to pause for Dennis. What do you got for me, buddy? I got nothing. You got nothing? Are you typing away over there? I got nothing. Okay. I'm talking to the chat. Leave me Are on. you talking to the chat? All right, I got you. All right, ready? Um, now we're gonna go on. We're I'm gonna go on. I'm gonna answer a few questions because we've had some interesting questions. I promised I would answer them on this podcast. So we had a customer. We had one guy who came in who, by the way, I've really met some fantastic people lately. I'm so happy that you've been on this journey with us. You, you can't even even imagine. All of our employees are very happy but on this journey with, with us. Uh, it, it's, it's really been a, a fantastic experience. I was a dealer not too long ago, and for, for me to have like made this transition, which, which seems right, I, I love it. I, I, every day it's, it's a passion for me. And they, you know, they say live your passion and, and that's how you, know, you, you end up enjoying your life. Oh my God, it's our registered day. Um, and so, so it really is, it, it's, been an, it's been an amazing uh, journey. Uh, we've been able to sort of play out a little bit of the pettiness, uh, but, but I'm gonna answer quite a, a few questions. So number one is, so we, we had a customer ask us, why don't the casinos, uh, you know, what's, what's, why don't we have sponsors, casinos sponsoring the space? Like, you know, hey, you know, because we move customers. We have, we have 1,200 people visiting the store. We have 14, 15 million of people visiting our, you know, various channels. Not so much the podcast. Thank God for the core group of you that come here. But we have all these people making contact with our space and learning about the games. And me and, me and Alex have sat back and wondered, like, you know, why is this a thing? Why wouldn't a casino want our uh, our user base? And let's be honest, it, it hasn't been easy. We, we you, you know we had that uh, horrific experience at the downtown Grand. And then we moved on to what we what was a better experience at the Westgate. But ultimately, it, it was, uh, we were met with a, a, I would say, a lackluster level of appreciation. Like ultimately, we walked away from these venues and no one really cared. There wasn't a lot of thanks. There wasn't a lot of, hey, want to come back. There wasn't anything like that. In fact, somebody behind the scenes uh, said that our users were rowdy, which is uh, nonsense. So our, uh, w w people standing around the table waiting to play at a promised $10 game when a pit manager sees numbers flying in his head and all of a sudden raises the limits to $25, well, they're probably a little agitated. They probably look a bit uncomfortable standing there because there's 150 people surrounding a pit and they're expecting one thing but they're given something else completely outside of you know what this casino ever has uh and so yeah they probably looked agitated but there was no rowdy to it we have the same customers that everybody else is in fact most of our customers are following the line of like alex we're just here to have fun we just want to have fun and, and many of us don't even want to win those of you on the 5X Martingale systems, oh my God, you just want to have the experience, the full degen, full blown out experience. And God bless you. If that's your goal, it's your money, have at it. Enjoy yourself, you know? Uh, that's not rowdy. That's just gamers being gamers. You want to see rowdy? You can go to half a dozen casinos on a Friday or Saturday night and see kids out there getting looted, having their 21st birthday, doing the bachelor thing, being rowdy as hell. That's that's not even a thing for us. So by the way, the, that that individual who who presented that to a few casinos, eh, man, can I can I flip anybody off while I'm online now? Okay. 
uh, but that but that's happened. So why don't why don't they you know why don't they work with us? You know what we're 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 tired of asking the question. To be honest with you, I mean we're we're gonna do our thing. We're gonna empower and educate our consumers as much as we can. We're gonna offer the experience here and have this opportunity. We're we're gonna put out the best dealers possible, uh, and we're gonna try to create as much opportunity for them as we can. And the rest of it we'll just leave to the powers that be. Maybe one of these days, you know, we'll go old school and uh, and then we'll be we'll be the beacon, you know. Uh, maybe some casinos will follow us back to the light and, and create the, a value based experience again, uh, focused on focused on the gaming, focused on gambling, and and that's ultimately our goal. So as much as you know, we can we can talk about uh, all the ways the casinos don't want to wear. We we were invited to G2E this year. Uh, by you know the new light and wonder scientific games and ultimately uh, I mean we had no idea we we, we, we showed up there uh, you know we we had some weird interactions uh, you know no one said hello no one said thank you there was none of that it was just like here is a lot of the same stuff we did run into some really interesting designers and some cool games and graphics when we moved over to the table game area uh, we were once again reminded why this company can't provide shufflers for the dealers that we are training to quite literally work on their tables. So they, it's a table tech company that offers tables and we can't even give our, our dealers shufflers. Like apparently it's, it, it's this big hurdle, uh, but uh, we got ghosted in that process and one of their vice presidents happened to come in while we were there, uh, reminded us uh, very quickly of why uh, scientific games uh, doesn't work with us. And to be quite honest, we don't know. We don't know why, but um, right away we were um, made to feel very uncomfortable. And so we, we left the space and uh, here we are. We're, we're, we're talking to you guys, having another day. What do you think? Good? Good. All right. Uh, next, go. What do you mean next? I don't know. I'm asking uh, you. Are, you. are you done with your you, topics? You went over. Yeah, I'm done talking for a second. Just a second. I'm going to get well, back to while, it. Well, uh, while we're taking a little bit of a break, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. all 363 of you, leave a like. What are you doing? Oh, we're going to get hanging for the petty stuff. It's coming. Did I mention Light and Wonder? Okay, I'm past that. Um, so, uh, ready? Here we go. Uh, next, we have the next fan who came in and talked to me and wondered why there aren't better dealers uh, or a lot of supervisors seemed untrained uh, or unready or unprepared for dealing with legitimate issues that, that customers have. So if, if you're buying into a table and it's a $15 game and 10 minutes into your $15 game, it becomes a $25 game, you should be grandfather, right? Most of us, I think every one of us, uh, me as a dealer, I've always been grandfathered. I, I, I will remark, uh, especially about that. I'll be like, well, I'm in at 15. Oh. And, and they'll be like, yeah, you're grandfathered in. But, you know, not, not there's, there's, let's just say the training has, um, has gone amok. Uh, there's, there's quite a few venues now who rely on either unskilled, uh, untrained, uh, or unaware staff. Uh, people are in positions or are dealing on the front line who quite quite uh, honestly shouldn't be there. And there are some of people, some of us uh, show up at a casino and they'll say, you'll, you'll be playing a system and they get frustrated because you learned it on YouTube. Because God forbid you learned a system on YouTube and now you're playing at the casino and the dealer just wants to commiserate about the whole experience. And I promise you when that dealer goes on break, they're going to commiserate some more. Not just a couple days ago, right after I spoke with this player about their very poor experience at a top tier casino. And I'm going to talk about the school here in a second, but I had someone come in here who was a dealer that I worked with many years ago. And now I'm going to tell you why I never, why it was so hard for, for dealer David to get promoted or one of the reasons I should say. So, so as I always preferred to be a dealer, I really didn't want to wear a suit for the longest time. I really liked being a dealer. I liked interacting with customers. I liked dealing. I liked dealing crafts. I liked interaction. I just didn't want to be the guy in the suit. I didn't want to be the adversary. I didn't want to take responsibility of the game. I liked the idea of taking off my apron and going home. You know, I had enough stress from earlier periods of my life. And, and to be honest with you, I had enough stress at home. I had a young kid. I had a wife. You know, I had a lot of things that that didn't always play out for me. And so I was under a lot of stress. So I didn't want to add to that. I wanted to go to work, be a dealer, 
focus on my side of the game and just have fun. But the thing was is that I, I really I hated sitting at a dead table. I hated dead games. And I loved working with players that, that had complicated systems, let's say that. Uh, I loved I loved being challenged as a dealer. I loved I loved players that pressed a unit. I loved players that did the outside. I loved just being heads up all the time and being ahead. And I challenged myself to work with, with players. So as I moved properties or as you know David was on a game. You know, I had customers who wanted to play with me and, and over the years that evolved and I would end up on tables and I shit you not where there were dealers who hated me for always keeping the game busy. I, I literally had this guy that came in the other day. I worked with at a casino off the strip years ago and he was somebody who just wanted to sit on the dead game. He didn't want to deal. He didn't. He hated all his customers. He always had shit to say about customers in the break room. God forbid, you know. And he wanted to, to sign the early outlet. So that's something as a dealer you can do. If the action dies down, they close tables, they can get, you know, you can get an early out. And one day before, towards the middle of the shift, we're, we're, we're transferring to this other table. He pulls me aside and he goes, you know, why can't you just be like the rest of us? And, you know, want to sit there, you know, dead game. Why is it that you're always trying to get action on the table? You're, you're keeping people on the game. Because sometimes if you work with David, right, I would stay late. Uh, I didn't always, I didn't need the EO. I had bills to pay. Plus I had a gambling problem. So there, there you go. More bills to pay. Right. And so I would often stay late. I was often, uh, you know, people would come to my table and there'd be a hot roll and no one wanted to leave or no, the players and you couldn't kill the table. You ever been to a table where they seem to be, the dealers seem to be really pissed off and they're moving the dice quickly because they're trying to race for the seven. They, they were told to bring up the lid on the next seven out and now they're hunting for the seven. So they're going to run the dice on you. They're going to they're gonna create a poor experience. And somehow this this is okay. Like somehow that's, you know, we should be okay with that. I, I, never, I never got that. I never got how these supervisors would play into this mentality. I, there were literally casinos I couldn't go I, I couldn't go to the break room because uh, uh, a I didn't want to hear all the bitching and moaning about all the players that we have even players that tipped when I was working at the Rio there was a day where Tokes only went 250 250 dollars by the way this is the 90s and the dealers were bitching about it not being more right I I'm pretty happy with 250 bucks and and I've I've had many players not tip very nice people weren't aware that they can tip just didn't understand the, the mechanics of it and right away dealers will take it to the breaker and they'll commiserate around it and, and and that creates just a poor experience right so david didn't get a lot of jobs because very often i would end up at these casinos and it's, it's a small group up here uh there's a lot of ego they all know each other they all talk to each other they all they all they all work in the same circles and 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 that's the problem the, the problem is is that me and alex are all about the truth we're all about being honesty. We lay it all out for everybody to see, but ultimately it comes back and smacks us in the face, right? Okay, we got more. Ready? What do you got? So we have uh, S. Nakamura gave us a dollar and nine cents. Thank you, sir. Uh, LVD Gent says, now you got something low, five dollars. I think he's referencing something earlier. Uh, okay. Black Sheep says, Mimo will be seeing y'all. Fantastic. Uh, something, by the way. Something, something I've, right? I've met you before. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. just sent a Joker card. Thank you so much. We appreciate Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome back. Yeah, yeah. D1 Key says, uh, gave us ten dollars. Says, uh -huh. our tables and slot minimum so high because casinos are greedy, or because it's simply how it has to be to make profits to afford all oh, the amenities. That is a fantastic question, man. I had that earlier, but uh, in my rants, I forgot about it, dude. It, it it's literally about trying to squeeze the margin. They're trying to get the highest value player, the least amount of effort and eliminate the loss, the, the potential to lose, right? So there's there's people that come up $5 games, $3 games, $10 games, you know, you come to the bank while you come to the strategy, the higher these limits, the higher these minimums go, and the lower the maximum go, the harder it is for you to walk out a winner, right? And it's 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 not, so, so that's the sort of shared opportunity for the casino. Let's up the game. And let's, the same people are buying in, by the way. You see a $15 table, you still have the same amount of money you were going to buy in if it was a $5 table. But now, whatever you were planning to do on a $5 table probably won't work as well. And, and now, you're, now instead of betting across, you're just betting the 6 and 8, right? So it changes the dynamics of the game. Interestingly, I, I had Scott here. I don't want to throw Scott on the bus, but by the way, so Scott's open $3 games. When the game's dead, he's happy to see a $3 table or a $5 table because those games will bring in money. 
Now they can also get, get whacked a little bit, right? Because they bring in a lot of traffic. Next thing you know, it's a hot table. And those of us that take advantage of a hot table and, and, and start at $5, but can go to $500, right? But uh, yep, it's, it's, it's absolute greed. Let's be realistic. It's 100% uh, it's, uh, greed. So those of you going out to the casino floor and they have a bunch of crap tables, they're all sitting dead and the dealers are hanging out talking to each other and the supervisor's loving the business or lack of business, it, it's all part of the process. One guy shows up at the game, uh, buys in, loses 500 bucks, doesn't have a lot to do on a $15 table. If you're playing a $15 table with 500 bucks, you got to find a short money system. There's not a lot of across... Uh, action or, or larger strategies that will that will that you can take advantage of with that kind of bankroll so so it's all great I, I really I really think that that's gonna change it has to change I really think that as much as many of us are nervous about the recession that's coming or some of the bad news that that's sort of coming from around the pike everyone's like well 2023 is gonna be a tough year although we have yet to see that I, I do think that there's space for for casinos to become more competitive right and, and they're all playing into the same cards. It used to be, I was I looked very forward to all the new operators on the Strip, which, by the way, the Strip used to be very consolidated. You know, the same three companies essentially owned all the properties, maybe four companies, right? And now you have a lot more players. But but you have players who are going for the jugular, as, as it were. I mean, the, the, these are these casino operators have, have seen the light as it's been shown to them. And instead of becoming more competitive, they're just finding new ways to expense out the experience. More Michelin starred restaurants. Listen, not everybody can afford a Michelin starred restaurant. We, we understand that that's some fantastic food, maybe, maybe. But you know, throw us a little bit, throw us a cafe with a $9 you know, breakfast deal or a $12 breakfast deal so we can get on with the rest of our experience. How about how about a how about a show? How about a couple lounge acts that don't require a $25 foofy beverage? I mean, it, it's it's just uh, wow. All right, what else? What do you got, buddy? You typing away? Uh, I'm always typing away, but okay. I do have a ten dollars super chat from Thank Aaron. You. Hi, Aaron. It says I was playing on the floor SR table at Bellagio with a hundred dollar minimum. Yeah. Someone bought in with several thousand dollars, and the pit uh, boss instantly modified the min to three hundred dollars and brutal. wouldn't grandfather anyone. Yeah, greedy. brutal. I'm greedy as hell. I, I know that that's the go-to now. That's literally the next evolution. Is as soon as somebody comes up in hand, I mean, can you imagine? You're sitting there playing with a hundred dollar minimum. That's a lot of money, dude. You you don't you don't buy in for an SR game without. I mean, they they used to have one on the floor at the Cromo, twenty five bucks, right? Now it's uh. And, and some guy comes up with more money, they don't grandfather you in. It makes no sense. I, I, I don't understand how they've gone to extending even some kind of value or some type of uh, hand in. It just, it's amazing the number of stories that I get uh, I get shown all the time. But go ahead. Before I do I have anything else? I'm gonna one go, more. I'm going to go to the school here in a uh, minute. Chaos. Chaos. Chaos yeah. $5 says, I'm noticing a disdain for roulette systems also. Yeah, I bet casinos aren't fond of you guys because you bring an educated gambler and yep. they want newbies. Yep, that's true. You know, we used to think it wasn't so true, but we've actually had people show up at a casino and they're like, did you learn this at Casino Quest? And then the guy wrote like, yeah, we did. Because guess what? It's a gambling game. This is a way to gamble. It's all legal. That's the game. That's the game. That's how it can be played. The same thing with, with craft strategies. You know, we, we do have a casino, several casinos here in town, by the way, that love the strategies. They're happy to have you play. They're happy to have you come and enjoy everything. Uh, but then there's, there's, you're going to run into dealers that, that commiserate. You're going to run into very poorly trained staff. They can't manage the action. That's another frustrating thing. I'm going to get to that next as far as the school goes. Um, I wanted to I wanted to address on that because that 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 part of it that part of the equation gets asked a lot, but all right what else? Good. Keep going, keep going. All right, so you know interestingly you know we, we train dealers uh, and uh, we have a, a a high degree of training at our school. So we have you know we have Cosmo dealers, Mirage dealers. We have I have a shift boss. I have we have some of the highest level casino operators, people that have worked a long time in this business collectively. Our staff has, I don't know, 500 years. Becky's been in the business. I mean, maybe 490 years, give or take a few years. But um, we have quite the staff. So we, we train people to a high level of, of, of skill, and um, we are well-respected uh, for that experience. At the same time, we have, we have gone out and, and tried to obtain the equipment 
that you run into on the tables today because obviously the tables have evolved it's not just the, it's not just the dealer they have you know muckers so they have the, these machines that muck the the muck the chips they have automatic shufflers they have there's a lot of new tech that's been included in the tables and so we me and alex have gone out and tried to make it a point to to obtain this tech for our dealers so that when a dealer shows up at these jobs, they have some awareness of the tech that's being played out. Guess how many of these companies have agreed to uh, their tech in our school? And you would think, now there was one company that beta tested some tech at our school and ultimately they ghosted us. We're not sure why they ghosted us. We've heard some rumors of why they ghosted us. They took, they came in one day, took all their tech out. We had a beautiful, we thought it was a beautiful relationship. And I think that ultimately what some of you probably think is true. And I think that our, uh, our unfiltered uh, you know, presentation of some of the tables, they're just leery. They don't want to be caught in, in, in the middle of that, right? Or you know, we, us educating gamblers, us providing a venue for gamblers, us having you know, lessons here, gameplay. There, there, are, there are quite a few people now that come to Vegas just to come to Casino Quest. Uh, they don't want to gamble, but they want to get the experience of the games. We, we've had groups here like nonstop. We have three groups so far this week, and it's a fantastic venue to, to have that experience have that, that ex without actually losing any money, right? It's just a fixed cost, and you can have the whole thing. You can have it catered. You have some fantastic dealers, dealers who care, want to engage, and are friendly, all these things. And so... Um, interestingly, you know, one of those, one of those, uh, one of those companies was Light and Wonder, and so we reached out to them. And at, at one point, we were told, "Hey, we're going to give you guys shufflers. You've been wanting shufflers. Go ahead." And they said, "Just uh, you got to go through the application process." A uh, quick uh, side note: Go, Light and Wonder, otherwise known as Scientific Games, they Scientific changed their games. names recently. Yeah, they have the shufflers. Okay, so uh, we went ahead. Me and Alex filled everything out, and there, there's nothing. Listen, there, there's nothing in there. there. There's nothing. Like you know, one of us, not me doesn't have the best credit uh, because they had to keep the business. So there was a, there was a point, you know, and, and here it is unfiltered Davis poor, poor Alex. So Alex, Alex many years ago started the dealer school himself and on a literally a shoestring and, and had some difficulty building the business. And so had to take out loans, max out his credit cards and it went south. A lot of business owners, by the way, go through this. A lot of business owners, you have to fail many times to get to success. I myself have failed many times to get to, to this point. And, and I've had points in my life where I, I didn't even have a car. I couldn't afford a car. I couldn't get credit to buy a car. None of those things were true. Uh, I've been evicted from, from residences before. Uh, you know, to not, not, not always my fault, but anyways. Um, so we, we, we applied, we did the application process and we got ghosted. We literally got ghosted. Uh, it's, it's quite stunning. It is quite stunning. And, uh, of course the person that had a role in ghosting us was also the person we ran into on the floor as we go. Cause you know, we, we, we migrate from the slots as much as I love Kino and I love so much. We migrate over to the table games. We actually ran into a guy, tried to have a conversation about the new shuffler tech. We, 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 we did exactly what they told us to do. We go online, we look up all the new tech that they have, and we're very interested. So they have this new software where a boss can actually read into the shuffler. They have this new shuffle tech, and they can figure out how many hands per hour are getting out and getting dealt out, which is, which is, a, which is a metric that they use to make sure that you know, we're getting enough hands out, that these, the dealer is proficient enough. And, and, and many casinos really like to use that now the that has changed a little bit in the era of customer service or so what's supposed to be customer service so they don't require so many hands per hour but if you ever wonder why the dealer has their head down and they're just whipping cards out as fast as they can it's because they're trying to they're trying to get that average up because some some dealers some casinos will put a dealer's job at risk if they're not getting enough hands per hour there's even a casino that where you have used to be, used to be, not a lot of this that goes on, but you had a shuffle. You had to do a two deck shuffle in about 40 seconds or less. You have the cards out. You have to do the whole shuffle, two decks though, not, not such a big deal, not a six deck, eight deck, but two decks have about 45 seconds and, and have the first spot dealt out. So 45 seconds, that's it. And if you get, if you can get past that audit, uh, your second time, you got suspended. You had to go back and get retrained until the point where you can get out. And I won't say what the casino is, but some of these hands per hour metrics are high, you know, in the hundreds of hands per hour. And what they now you don't always have a full game. And that's assuming five or six spots it used to be seven spots, but five or six spots now. And what they'll do is they'll they'll put surveillance, they'll put the camera on that person 
and they'll they'll do it for 15 minutes and then they'll multiply it out based on the number of spots they're actu actually dealing in this kind of thing and they'll try to come up with the fuzzy number well now they have the shuffle tech that's literally like right built right into the flipping shuffler on 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 how they get uh, or the shoe i should say the shoe on the shoe on how many of these hands are being pulled out and being presented to the players because uh, the tech has really evolved uh, it, it, it's quite stunning. So they're, they're, they've evolved the tech on, on uh, the line of sight. So they have some that use uh, artificial intelligence in the cameras, others that use the RFID, the, the, the sort of microwave technology, or not, or the wave technology, what is that, frequency technology. Um, and so, so the, the next big evolution from the boss standpoint is really just being able to, to watch, to bean count everything. You know, how do we get more hands per hour? How do we get more? What are, what are the side bets that are Im improving the hands per hour? Uh, how many of these side bets? Because some side bets take forever. And so let's get rid of those side bets. Let's get the side bets that that people don't, can't take a, as much opportunity of. We can, we can increase the number of hands per hour. Let's optimize the game. And the bean counters, man, they are literally working their ass off trying to figure out these equations. So we walk over there, find the guy sitting there. Uh, we assume he's got a he's got a badge on. We assume he's there to talk, maybe not. Uh, and um, yeah, he just uh, he kind of mocked the whole experience. I mean, our interaction with him was was uh, delayed. He had he didn't have a whole lot to say. And then of course the next dude came up, the guy that that ghosted our application or turned us down for for the shufflers. Uh, so there's that. All right, what do you got? Oh, you got anything? Not really. All right. Uh, do we have any questions? Can I answer anything? Go ahead. Fire away. Ask me anything. This is David's non-filtered. Uh, ask me anything. Anybody? Uh, not Nothing yet. You got to give him a second. You, you can move on to the next topic. I'll save any questions they got. Ask me anything. Uh, I know that there's a little bit of a delay. Uh, but yeah, go ask me anything. Uh, ask me anything about CG. Ask me anything about you know gambling. I'll be, I'm, I'm ready to answer. I'm literally ready to lay it all out there. Um, Anything? Well, well, let's do this. Let's give away this damn hat. I'm gonna give away this hat. See this beautiful hat? It's a Casino Quest hat. Well, before before we do, go. 141 of you, hit that like button. Go. We are just sitting here. We're kind of waiting for some likes here. Just just a little bit. We'll give it away now. Let's do it. All right, ready? Go ahead. Uh, truth, truth. Just do truth. Type in truth in the chat. Truth in the chat. We're gonna give away this hat. Uh, not this exact hat, but a hat just like it will send. We also have the genius hat. So if you want to be just a genius, you don't have to represent Casino Quest. Uh, we'll give you that. You can choose which one. Gorda Race says, how do I submit my own strategy? They're in the link tree below. There's, if you click it, you'll see a strategy submission form. Click on that. You can submit your strategy right there. Yeah, fantastic. All right, guys. We're going to give away this hat. I'm ready to call it a day. David's going to get some uh, rest. Unless you have some questions. We got any great questions? Great question. Go. While uh, people are typing truth, it says, mm -hmm. David, how do you know you have a, gra a gambling problem? Uh, yeah, you're not can't pay your bills, dude. You're you're you got payday loans out. You're 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 thinking about pawning something or you chase. I, you know, I have I used to have a friend of mine had a shit ton of money, was very very wealthy, and always used to think that he didn't have a gambling that this was money he could budget and make allowance. But if you can't leave the table, if you can't get up even when you win, that's a problem. You you have to have a strategy for leaving the game as much as you have for playing the game. Both of those things are true. So if, if you can't leave a game a winner and, and you're very often just donking it out, you know, I know stop loss zero is a very popular thing, but that, that's not that's not realistic. That's not even gambling. That's just you hating yourself and hating your money and wanting to give away your money. And we would talk about it quite interesting because he would just go home broke. He lived on this big fat trust fund that got reset every month. So if he went broke, wasn't the biggest deal. As long as he had gas and he had a car that was paid for, he had a home and all this uh, other stuff. Go. I do I do have a super chat from Mr. Barnes. Like I Barnes. Uh, I missed it earlier. Go. But uh, he said, just shout out to my, my friends, uh, Dennis and David. Thank you. Hi, guys. Hi, Mr. B. Uh, also, I'm paraphrasing because I don't, I don't remember what exactly, exactly but uh, Mimo asked, uh, what, is a, what casino is CQ friendly to, uh, to us? Like, what, who's friendly towards us? There's a lot. So we, we definitely have a lot of very intelligent people in this business who are more who are about consumer engagement and they're about the brand, they're about the value. I, I will say our, our friendliest two properties, I think I think on a wide basis are station casinos and boy properties. Uh, strangely enough, we, we I mean not strangely enough. There's there's a few strip properties that play into that. Oh, this this one is that me? 
it, the it's camera okay. Down. The camera, the camera, will be right back. Just, uh, oh. just wait a quick second. Hang on, hang on. I have no idea what happened there. Are they, still, are they typing away truth? They're typing away truth. All right, we gotta stop. But this is, this is a good question. Um, what, what, we, yeah, what, who's friendly? Just, just talk that like. So, you know, we work with quite a few. We have a, a lot of, of people in the business that are interested in sort of evolving the space and looking to acquire long term. Uh, opportunity with customers and those are those are the brands we work those are the casinos we work with let's be realistic um good i can't see anything no we're still going god i'm such a boomer all right um so i would say station casinos is probably the um the casino that we work with the most um almost all the stages they've been a fantastic partner they take uh the operation and safety of this battery cannot be <laughs> guaranteed. Did they see that or is that just me? No, they could, me. See, they could see that for a second. Oh, really? They saw it. But just keep going. Uh, Boyd Properties is another one. There's there's quite a few. There's a few strip properties that we've been very friendly with. Some of us have not taken us all too seriously, to be honest with you. There's, there's a few people who have really looked forward to our demise. So they keep thinking that we're going to fail and, and you know we're not going to be able to move on as a business. I, I'm almost, I almost guarantee you that during COVID, everybody thought we were out for the count, and that's that's been that's been the thing. You know, Al Alex is the uh, Alex is like casino royalty in a way. His his parents have have had some of the best jobs in town, and so you know he had kind of an easy ride that that there more than a few people were were jealous of. So, you know, he's run into a lot of that. Although if you you've seen him deal, he's a very good dealer, and mechanically he's a fantastic deal. He's also a really good educator, and and. And for all of whatever he went through in the casino world, pushing him into the education world was fantastic because ultimately that's where he belongs. He's really, really, he's so patient and, and very passive. And the way that he describes how things are done mechanically is really just, uh, it's a God-given talent. All right, here, let's well, get away this We're going to keep going, actually. Tell, so tell me when to stop. Stop. Five. Five? Okay. Two. 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 Steve Zuver, I think Steve. I said that right. You are the winner. I'll type your name in chat. Make sure to email us. I'll type the email also in chat. Yeah, let's keep this going. Let's keep this going. For all those people that left, screw it. Um, so yeah, so we um, we have a lot of really good. We have a lot of really good friends. So we we have lots of friends in this business. There's no doubt, and and that feel the same way that we do. Obviously, that they're working up against a corporate culture that's changed a little bit. But you know we we vary it so there's there's believe it or not among and you I know that you even as players you run into all the ego and and the dirty looks and all the disengagement but then you run into some really really wonderful people uh, frontline employees who are really eager to talk to you eager to engage you know eager for your business you know even if they can't do something on the spot they they try to evolve the conversation give you a heads up hey maybe this host maybe maybe this experience is better for you whatever the case is so there is a lot of that and we we sort of we we kind of mock the old mentality um it's strange because there's still a lot of casinos that don't want you to take a picture you know we understand they don't want you to take a picture of the high limit but Social engagement is quite literally like the, the what everything is built on nowadays. And and you just you don't know who you're gonna piss off. So you got someone with a camera that wants to take a picture so they can share that engagement. That's a positive thing. Um, you know, hopefully they're you know fully dressed and they're not flipping people off or they're not they're not, you know, engaging in a bad way. You know, I know there's a lot of judgment out there, but ultimately, you know, we we have a boss who who put the, the hashtags right on the table. And, and wanted when people collected a big hand or had a big jackpot he encouraged you to take a picture and show everybody get home hey guess what I was here and I won a ton of money I mean it makes it makes all the sense it seems like its own bit of genius now it's amazing how many bosses were like oh no you can't take a picture of our table we're gonna give away the secrets the, dude there's no secrets man you know what I mean there's nothing there there's no secrets okay and and you know filming the slot machines it used to be that they didn't want you filming the slot machines. There, there were there were actual gangs of people whose job it was to try to take advantage of these machines, and because they were mechanical machines, and you could drill a hole and put a rod in and do all this other nonsense. But that's that's not how machines work anymore. And and you know we we were at G2E, so we were at G2E with our cameras because we thought that's why they wanted us there, and we were filming the whole experience. Do you know that there were quite a few uh, people that told us to. Uh, that we they didn't want us filming they were afraid that people were going to steal their stuff and they were like you know if, first of all 
if, if you're a million dollar business and you're, you're building a machine, haven't you already done all like the copywriting and trademark? No one's learning anything new. There's not two cup holders, dude. Okay, well, but two cup holders, that's big. You don't want that to be robbed, okay? You want to make sure you keep control of that. We, we actually ran in. That was the guy who was the most fun. He, he, we ran into this SR game. That was fantastic. Really beautiful SR game. And we're, we're, we're going to have that, by the way. That was, our best, that was our best engagement of all at G2E. And you know that guy straight up said, because we were, we were asking him about, you know, do you, don't you realize you're a little behind the curve here with, the, with your single zero? Haven't you uh, thought about triple zero or quadruple zero? And he's like, no, nah, Europeans, we don't. You guys are getting screwed here in the United States, dude. We don't do, we only do single zero games. It was fantastic. It was the most honest thing. We got it all on camera. We're going to, we'll have it up there, right, Dennis? Are you working uh, on I that I mean, one? it depends if we get some time to edit it. But, but I yeah. do have some super chats as a uh, good transition there. Good. K Panther said, in your opinion, mm -hmm. what is the most genius innovation in the history of gaming? Mm. Wow, that is big. The most genius innovation in the history of gaming. Wow. 20 card Kino, dude. <laughs> I know, there's a lot of haters out there. You know what? That's interesting. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people would be like a cashless floor. That That's not genius for me. That's dangerous for me. My experiences are I would I would really hate for every the casino floors to go cashless. They're trying to do that. But I think that's that just sets up lots of problems. If anything... You should, I would love for casinos to have like a budget meter, you know? There's already casinos that if you have a problem, you could say, hey, I have a problem and they won't let you in or they won't let you play, whatever the case is. But more than that, say, listen, this is what I can realistically afford. Now let me go in here and play with this, you follow? So that none of us get in trouble. We can go and have the experience and budget it correctly. But apart from that, I mean, I, I think I, I, I think the game changer for most of the casinos is is the shuffler, uh, is the automatic shuffler. Uh, I think them, you know, being able to randomize the cards completely, uh, you know, on, on blackjack or really any any card game has 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 helped uh, from the casino's vantage point. As as far as craps go, I mean, the craps innovation was really way back in the way in New Orleans when you know everything was sort of evolved on the crap table. So this this is not, but man, what a great um, you know players card player tracking is uh, is a big one. Um, I, I think the shuffler the shuffler on its own uh, is big. Um, on a slot machine, ticket in, ticket out. We actually met the guy that that helped uh, evolve. Uh, that started the whole ticket in, ticket out. I think I think on a slot machine, a ticket out, ticket in, big. Uh, as for an innovation, that that made a lot of sense. I mean, back in the day, you used to have to, you know, feed the coins. So being able to just feed a hundred dollar bill, twenty dollar bill, whatever the case is, and then get out a ticket for redemption. Although I hate the fact you can't get all your change back, but makes the transition from machine to machine so easy. You used to have to cash it out, wait for your coins to come. So it was a very slow, slow feeding it. Now you can get more money in the machine <laughs> a lot faster and move on. But I think I think from both, I think players and the casinos both love that innovation is is enjoyed on both levels. I don't think for those of us that were like, oh crap, I couldn't get my coins in. You know, I'm getting my coins in faster now. It, it's not a takeaway. Your hands are clean. You don't have to carry around. You don't have to wear gloves to put the nickels in or the quarters in. Uh, so I think I think those are the two things: ticket in, ticket out, and uh, the shuffler. <laughs> we have another uh, question. Says yep. From Bill Phillips. Yes. Gave us ten dollars. Says on the whole, yep. is it better to establish yourself with a large resort chain or a small, more local resort? If you're talking about personally, it depends on you. If yeah. you're talking about us, uh, I, I mean, I don't know what the answer well, is. Well, uh, from a player's car perspective, I I would say if you're looking to come to Vegas, hook up with a higher, hook up with the Caesars property or Boyd property near you, something like this, where you really can get benefits across a wide variety of casinos. Now. You know, the takeaway is sometimes those smaller properties have some better um, better givebacks or better values that you could take advantage of. And so so that's great, too. But I, I know of a couple um, who who uh, 
who learned roulette from Alex from our videos and and established a, a large comp value, got a free room here in Vegas and came out to Vegas with their winnings from roulette, six thousand dollars, sixty two hundred, I believe, and came out to Vegas because they had a Harris or they have a Harris near the Caesars property and were, were able to come to Vegas, stay at Caesars, have the whole vacation paid for, enjoyed that, and so. I, I really think it's, it's up to you, man. I, I really break it. For me, I always break it down into the dollars. I, I even even I play at a local casino here called Dottie's a lot. And Dottie's gives me back, even though I sometimes hate the the, the service can suck. The food is just, eek, and, you know, it's not all that's cracked up to be. It's people smoke, and I'm not a big smoker anymore. But, you know, I get a lot of dollars back while I'm playing. So, I mean, the other day, I only played a $100 bill, and I got about $40 in in actual dollars back that i could i could feed the machine the great thing about their cash back is you can you can actually cash it out you don't even have to play it they let you do whatever the hell you want you can transfer it to the machine press cash and it's yours it's in your it's in your pocket you don't have to play it out you know how when when most casinos give you like a 20 dollar it's a credit and then you got to play it out and if you win from that then you can cash it out but you know it's not you can't go into the casino and say hey give me my 20 dollars but at Dottie's, it's literally your money. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. And so I, I enjoy that. And for me, I ultimately get more rewards from that than I do from some of the players' club. Now, <clears throat> here in Vegas, without any doubt, the um, the, the 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 two cards that I I uh, I think are uh, that I enjoy the most. Well, by far, Stacy Casino. So Stacy Casinos, they. Uh, they comp out everything. So as you get points, you can use those points in the gift shop. You can use them to eat. You can do whatever the hell you want with them. So there's a lot of value there. If you play enough, you get legitimate sort of value upgrades. Um, you can get casino rates. Uh, you can get hosts that can hook you up. Um, they've gone away from like the straight up comp value. But if you can get to you know some of the higher levels, you can you know skip the lines. You know you you get uh, you know VIP check in all that stuff. Now on the strip. Uh, for strip casinos, I think for the, most of you think have voted that Caesars has some of the best uh, car bet because every every new tier you get a benefit, you get an actual benefit. Like here's a restaurant you can go to, or here's a roof free room. Um, you know, if you stay across the country, Harris has El Dorado. Harris now has a Caesars. They have a lot of uh, casinos you can engage with. So, um, so I, I would do that. But if you have a local casino that has a, you know a great deal of value, I mean, it's it's always fun to. Um, to do that i mean and look at the damn pay tables uh, and the side bets i mean you know educate yourself on the game all right what else do we got anything else those are great questions i love it well someone asked what casino has the best service or what's the best experience so you know who has the best deal is in town hands down and we've gone through this a lot and i i will say that this will change this this is per casino right you, I know a lot of you guys will go to You have your favorite local casino. The dealers love you. They know you. They, they take good care of you. Fantastic. There's lots of that. But the one the one casino here in town I get a lot of positive feedback is Aria, without a doubt. Aria. You know, we, we have worked with Aria. Their concierge has worked with us. We've had a fantastic experience with them. It is one of the, believe it or not, as expensive as Aria can be. They, they they try to give back, I think, at, at the level that they are a lot. That, that Sky Suite experience is quite something. If you can afford it and get to the Sky Suites, it's kind of a white glove thing, priority check-in, all this stuff. They pick you up at the airport. And, I mean, it is literally – it's not cheap, uh, but it's definitely quite the experience. And the dealers there are absolutely fantastic. I have yet to have a negative feedback on any dealers there. We know a couple of the dealers there. And if you tell them that we sent you, fantastic. And if you have a system, they can work out. Now, granted, little higher limit tables. Uh, not everybody can afford those. That's a thing. The 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 one of the other places that we know of here is Ellis. We send a lot of people to Ellis, and for a reason. And and by the way, Ellis is the outlier. Ellis is inexpensive beer, great pizza. You know how they've kept that place going. And and let me say, it's not the uh, glossiest uh, casino hotel. Some people have gone there and they're like, well. That's not for us. And we understand that. But it has $5 tables, and they keep them $5, even when it's busy. They, they do sometimes go to $10, but they keep it there because, because – and they've, they've made themselves a destination. They've made themselves – they have great barbecue food that's, that's still affordable. Uh, they have wonderful service. They have dealers that will engage you. There's the dealers there that are absolutely fine, dealing up, down, all around. There have been a few supervisors that haven't been all that friendly on, on a few occasions. But – if you wonder how that place stays so busy, it's literally because of that. It's because they, they, they provide a real value for a lot of people looking for a real value. Want a low-limit game? Go there. 
the the yard is fantastic has some fantastic food and the cafe that's in there has some has literally famous barbecue i'm not a fan of everything they have in there but the barbecue is fantastic what else you got i lost the question i had it. you lost it oh okay someone Go. said quick question how long or how much would you have to play to get a free room in vegas depends on what game roulette tends to be the better one for the comps yeah, roulette, roulette. I mean, you could break even a lot on roulette. I mean, you're really gonna have to put up some money for. It. I have, I have an experience at a casino on this trip. I was looking to get the casino rate, and uh, they didn't. They, they first they told me they didn't have casino rates. Of course, they have casino rates, but it, it the, that, that dynamic has changed. I think that it, it might only cost you a couple hundred bucks if you can stay and play and maintain an average bet for so much time. But if you're coming here and you don't have a room yet and you're trying to earn a room. That's really a bad way to go because it's gonna that room might cost you a fortune if you can get to it. Uh, when it comes to, I would literally stay at the Motel Six and call it a day, dude, uh, and uh, just move on from there. When it comes to earning the rooms, I've um, I've been at even local casinos one time and I, I was trying to get a free meal, so I, I went there with some friends of mine and I was I was just trying to upgrade and, and get a free meal and holy crap that meal was expensive. I, I was I was insistent that I was gonna win it off the slot machine. It didn't work as it didn't work out as well as I had hoped. But um, you typically have to pay. You know it depends on the it depends on the level of casino. But so let's say you have a hundred dollars average bet for about four hours. Um, that'll get you to the casino rate or free room, something like this, depending upon the type of casino. I, I've heard people are very successful at the Westgate, by the way, playing at a regular pace, even if you're like a 25 cent slot player and you can play over the course of a day, getting the casino rate or getting a casino rate or giving, giving room. They have a host there that will literally, you can have a conversation with them outside of your points. You can literally talk to them about, Hey, I'm a player. I'd love to keep coming here. A lot of casinos have gone away with that. Really, they don't have that relationship anymore. If if your player card does not translate, you get nothing. You know what I mean? You you have to be. It, there's literally a com computer equation that that equates to okay, I played this much money for this amount of time, and this is what you get. Or a a room is X number of points. So if you don't accumulate those points for whatever play you have. Uh, you can't get there. That's a great. That's a great thing, by the way, that I love about station casinos is I can be a penny player, get to the points, and I get my stuff comp. Right? Doesn't matter that I'm a penny player. Uh, I'm a penny player over time. I can earn the same thing, the same rooms, the same same dinners, same gift shop, that kind of thing. Go ahead. Uh, we have a ten dollars super chat from Cody Blackwell. Thank you. It says I enjoy playing, but I'm not big on betting my own cash. But I think I would enjoy dealing. But to be honest, the pay, at least in my area, worries me. Thoughts yeah. on local casinos and working there. So it depends. Uh, a lot of local casinos pay well, strangely enough. I would go in and ask what the toke rate is. You can absolutely walk up to the pit and say, hey, I'm interested in becoming a dealer. I'm just curious what, what kind of pay rates. And they will share that. Uh, they're always eager to have people checking in and learning the games uh, or becoming dealers. Most casinos around the country are short. Uh, dealers, uh, just like most other businesses, are short uh, short employees, and they're anxious to share that experience. In fact, um, a couple go. little side notes. Uh, yep. Toke rate is the tip rate, uh, toke rate and tip rate. also mm -hmm. one of those things is you might it might seem abysmal only because they're only showing you what they pay the you know the minimum wage. Right. Dealers make most of their money on tips, so that's why it might be a little yeah. different. So it's always good to ask dealers that actually work there. Yeah, I mean Oklahoma, little. Sidebenders and uh, sidebender casinos in Oklahoma making fifty thousand a year. You'd be surprised at how generous the locals can be when it comes to their own community. So some of these casinos do really well. Uh, the pay is great. Blackhawk pay is fantastic. People are willing to make that whole commute up there. So it really just depends on where you're at. I know there's there are some properties uh, that uh, where the pay isn't isn't as good and the tow grade isn't as high. But if you go into a casino and you just see a couple tables. They might make a fortune, quite literally. Some of the best jobs here in Vegas was, well, one of the best jobs was just a truck stop that ran two blackjack games because you only got to split the tokes between a few people, and the truckers would come in, and they would play these $5 hands and a dollar for the dealer. And over a course of a day, you got a shit ton of tokes for everybody to share. I mean, it was a $100,000 a year job. From the, from the outside, it looked like, you know, these people may have been starving, right, because, uh, you know. It, it was what it was. It was just a dive casino with two two blackjack tables, but but it was a fantastic job. It was a, it, what we call a sleeper job, uh, and they they did great. 
I worked at the, I just had someone here today that uh, we, uh, we reminisced about our time at the Fitzgerald. I work at the Fitzgerald's back before, uh, so it's now the D, many years ago. And I worked on Graveyard. Uh, of all the three shifts, Graveyard was the best shift because it had the least number of ways. And we had this, this clientele built in that would come at Graveyard, that loved us. You know, we made it a point to have, you know, to, to promote friendliness. You know, we knew we worked on Graveyard. So we're like, okay. Everybody, we actually, we had, we had one woman who was a player, uh, and it was kind of like this famous story that we have, but she, she took care of us so well that every day that she was there, we were guaranteed that she was the first $50 of our envelope. So like if we made a hundred dollars in tips, 50 of it was because of this one woman. And, and we celebrated her as dealers by taking her out to eat at the Hugo Cellars, uh, at Hugo Cellars, this fantastic steakhouse, the Four Queens right next door. Can you imagine? All the dealers would get together, pool the money, and then we would take her out to eat ourselves uh, at, at the steakhouse, the celebrated steakhouse back in the day, Hugo Cellars, uh, which still, it still is, by the way, uh, because that's, I mean, that's how, that's how things were a little different back. Can you imagine the dealers chipping in and, and take, <laughs> taking you guys out to eat? Holy crap. I can't imagine that happening today, no. All right, what else you got, buddy? We're winding it down? I think we're winding it down here. Not that okay. many questions, but thank you guys so much for uh, everything. Thank you, please guys. Please leave a like. If you like this type of content, this is a little different from the usual podcast, so please leave a like. It lets yeah. us know Rant that you over. like this. Rant over. Rant over. Next podcast, we're going to try to get on a guest. Uh, we're going to get on a guest. We're going to talk about uh, some of a lot of things evolving Vegas. A lot of new casinos, a lot of new experiences coming here to Vegas. So we're going to talk about that. But All right, guys. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Uh, congratulations to the hat winner. And we'll see you here. Don't forget, CasinoQuest.biz to book a reservation. Shop Casino Quest for some cool stuff. Uh, we'll really quickly, no name. Go. We have noticed. I don't know about Electronic Craft, but I have noticed that uh, uh, like Electronic Roulette doesn't let you bet in some ways it, it, it happens actually yeah stay away from electronic roulette kind of sucks but there you go all Anyways. right and crapsy.com if you want to learn some more craps we'll see you there all right guys take care bye thank you guys bye bye, bye. fading away